this week on a brand new episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. Earl Thomas said that the middle finger was not to not to his teammates. It was to management. It was the middle finger to the management. I just want to get, make that clear. It was to the management. What, but I mean, that's stupid. Let me stop you. Was management standing on the fucking sideline? I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you what Earl Thomas said. We supposed to be the losers, but we win it, no. They used to laugh at us, now we win it, no. They used to tell me never in my lifetime. I guess they wasn't in their right mind. What's going on, folks? Welcome to a brand new excited episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. I mean, we just the realest sports podcast in all the land. True. Right, I don't know if you hear me, fam. I mean, in all the land. True. Let's get it. Making sure you there. Nosey Kings. Nosey Kings. I've been tweeting it all week. I've been tweeting it all week. To wrap up the previous week of sports in dramatic fashion, man. No BS, no sugar code, no bias. It's just that strong arm truth. If this happens to be the first time you are watching our podcast here on YouTube, or if you're listening on any of our various podcast channels, one half of the show, I go by the name of K Spade the Prospect. And I'm your boy, the Paris 57, and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Spade! Yes, sir. Nosey Canes, baby! I don't know why you so hype, bro. It's not really going to go Bruh, good for you. Because okay. it's Nosey Canes. I ain't never I seen nobody so hype about me. it. Here. I ain't never seen and nobody so hype about it. Hey, you, 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 bruh. You been in my mention all week. I sent the tweet every day. Nosey oh, came, we tomahawk chopping and everything. And you was like, I don't know why he's so. And I ain't say nothing. I, I said, why you I'm waiting that? to Saturday. Why you didn't I'm say waiting that? to Saturday. You didn't believe? Because I'm waiting to Saturday. Guess what today believe. is, babe? It's ass kicking time today. For somebody. Let's go. I don't know if it's for y'all. Let's go. Look, listeners, we're doing something a little different on this show right here, man. We're going to introduce somebody that we call him Statman D. He is here to make sure LaParis don't try to lie to y'all. Because you know when I give y'all stats, <laughs> them shits is official. When LaParis give y'all hey, stats. Hey, hey, hey y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember when Spade said, let's combine safeties. That's a genius I idea. I made one mistake, bro. You never let it was me a, live it, it down, It was a pretty big bro. blunder. It was one a pretty mistake. big blunder. <laughs> what are we starting today, bro? Baby, we starting in the NBA. Let's get I that over it. with. Let's get it. Because, I best, mean, it's NBA preseason. Nobody really best, cares about Best that. league in the nation. Let's get it. Relax. 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 Spade. Yes, sir. Gotta, we taking it up to Boston. You know, when we when we take a trip to Boston, they we only go, like, to the ball. black areas. Well, Is it black you know areas in Boston? Is it? I mean, I, I guess. What? Spade, got to talk about Kyrie Irving. Kyrie came out this week. Before a game and said he plans, his plans is to resign back with the Celtics. Also, yeah. also, he's trying to lure AD there. So, I mean, that Kyrie, Kyrie said he plans to sign back with the Celtics. He want to lure a, I, I said AD, not KD, Anthony Davis, not Kevin Durant. He's trying to lure Anthony Davis this way. Yeah. You believe Kyrie? I actually do, and, and I'm gonna tell. At first, I didn't, because you know players typically don't come out and go, "Oh, I plan to leave here." Like you don't really hear that. You always hear like, "Yeah, well, you know." I think Kyrie already lied to some little kid a long time ago and told him he would never ever leave Cleveland. You remember that? The kid said, "Kyrie, yeah. promise us you're not gonna do us like LeBron." He said, "I'll never leave. I'm gonna be in Cleveland forever, little boy." Lied like hell to that dude. But I'm gonna tell you why I believe this though. Because if you remember that, they was talking about Kyrie and Jimmy Butler somehow or another kind of, you know, making teams. So I think when mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler first came out and he was like, my top three teams of interest is the Knicks, the Nets, and the Clippers. Everybody was like, what the? You know, everybody was like, why? And I was like, oh, he going somewhere with a lot of cap space because, you know, his plan is to bring Kyrie later. Then that whole mm-hmm. thing switched. And then he was like, well, Miami's my most desired spot. And everybody was like. What the hell? How did how did that happen? Somewhere in there, Kyrie must have hit him on his beeper and said, "Look, bro, I, I'm I think I'ma just kick it here, dog. Like I got folks talking about Scary Terry can take my spot, bro. I my job ain't done here. I gotta let these folks know I'm that dude. So I actually believe Kyrie, and I don't have a problem with Kyrie saying he wanna stay there. He did say something in that interview that I did have a problem with. Check this out, bro. I don't know if you peep. It was kind of subtle. It might have got by you. He said, I'm happy here, man. You know, every day is at an all-time competitive high. And what more can you ask for from an organization, man? They took a chance on me, and they got me out of Cleveland. He made Cleveland sound like hell. He made it sound like prison. Mm. 
He said that they bailed him out. They came and got him out of Cleveland. And they got Cleveland fans like, hold up, man. We supported this clown for years, you know. Let's not forget, Kyrie wasn't winning shit till LeBron came there, bro. Like, And that fan base always kind of had Kyrie back. And I don't know why he keep jabbing it. Hey, I, look, something was popping in Cleveland know, that, that Kyrie had. Cleveland or was that like a little, uh, you know, little jab at Bron? Getting it probably was, Bron. but he needed to. I would much rather him say, hey, you know, and, and they got me out of a situation that I wasn't happy in. But he said they got me out of Cleveland. So, I mean, if you are a Cleveland fan, if, if, if lo and behold, if you actually leave in, if you live in Cleveland, that shit make you feel some kind of way, man. And Kyrie better be careful, man, because... They got the young bull over there, man. And I, I hate for Colin Sexton to get in his ass, dog. I would hate that. He relax. better leave them Cleveland relax. folks alone. I'm just saying. Relax. I'm just saying. <laughs> relax. I'm just saying. I mean, what do you think about him trying to lure AD, though? Boston fan. Boston. How? Bruh. It kills me. It seems like it rub off, too. You know how they fans be. They fans be like, oh, we getting this guy. We getting this oh, guy. We getting true. all these guys. That's every true. Every year. It seems like it's rubbing off on the players. Like, now they're like, oh, we're going to try and get AD up here. How, Sway? How? How? I mean, you know, the rumors is that AD, AD going to L.A. Let the rumors sell it. Rumor Mill saying after I mean, AD signed with LeBron's agent, he's going, well, not LeBron's agent, but you know what I'm saying. What is it? Clutch sports. Mm-hmm. Clutch play sports or whatever. Yeah, he's going to L.A. Also, if Kyrie got such a big beef with Bron, how you going to lure AD who signed to Bron's people? How that shit going to work? You know what I'm saying? So... I don't that's know, man. true. I don't know how that's going to work, me, bro. Hey, let me say this, too. Bruh, let me start a rumor. Oh, AD boy. coming to Chicago. I'm starting that rumor right now. Everybody else can just say, hey, I'm trying to lure AD to Chicago. Let's do that. In He's Chicago, from Chicago. Trying to get out of Chicago. Nobody wants bro, to go to Chicago. R- relax, bro. Jabari Parker just went back. Relax. Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose was there. Like, we trying to lure AD back to Chicago. You remember? I don't know if you've seen it, but he was in Barbershop. Barbershop was like... The set was in Chicago, like, hey. Nah, nah, Pinky. I'm starting it right now. AD, AD to Chicago. Let's go. I don't remember that. Bro, let's move forward. Let's go ahead and hit our next segment. You talked about AD. Let's talk about KD, Kevin Durant. Okay. Kevin Durant, man. A lot of people don't like KD, haven't liked KD since he decided to make a big-time decision to leave Oklahoma City and go over to Golden State. He obviously became a much better player. He already was lethal out there, but now he's shooting crazy efficient numbers from the floor, and he's a two-time Finals MVP award winner. He's that dude. Every time you can do something to help probably, you know, a good positive PR move, it's never a bad look on your career, and KD just learned that. Now, look, KD and his teammates got a chance to play in Seattle, and he came out rocking the Seattle Supersonics, Sean Kemp jersey. Let's not forget, Seattle was the organization that drafted Kevin Durant. They weren't yet the Oklahoma City Thunder. He came out rocking the Sean Kemp jersey, took the microphone, and his first words out of his mouth was, hey, first off, I want to give a shout-out to the Seattle Storm for holding it down here. And I was like, oh, snap. He just showed love to Sean Kemp, to Seattle, and the WNBA all in one spiel. I felt like it was a real positive look. Now, obviously, that might have changed. He, he later said that, that the city of Seattle deserves a basketball team. And I guess people missed the whole part of him giving a shout out to the Storm. Folks was like, Seattle got a basketball team. Kevin, it's the Storm. And somehow mm. or another, even that shit bounced back and hit him in the face. Kevin Durant comes out, shows love to Seattle. Did it feel genuine to you, bro? I mean, yeah, I think... You know, Seattle, it's like it's a couple of cities, it's a couple of cities in the states that you feel they need to have sports there. They need to have sports there. You feel and sorry. Seattle was one of those cities. Yeah, Seattle was definitely one of those. They have football there. They they you feel like they need they need an NBA team there. Crazy thing is, Spade, NBA said they have no plans on expansion to 2025, at least 2025. So Anybody thinking this thing going to happen anytime sooner, that's not happening. I don't have a problem with KD coming out. We know Seattle drafted him. I'm pretty sure you had some love. Those fans up there showed him mad love before the team was snatched away and went to Oklahoma City. But I do feel like Seattle do need a, a male a basketball organization up there. Wow. So I, I mean, I don't have a problem with KD coming out. with. Just, I mean, people give KD a hard time with Everything. Oh, he can't bro. win, bro. He can't win. Yeah, he can't win, man. <laughs> he can't win. And I mean, he brings some of this crap on himself. We already know he had the burner, the burner phone. That was like last year, I think it was. 
he had to burn the phone. We talked about that. But, I mean, I don't, it seemed genuine to me. I, it didn't seem fake or snakish to me. You know, I, I get it. People feel sorry for Seattle. Seattle lost the franchise, like you said, man. The Seattle fans, actually, I feel like they did a pretty good job of supporting the Supersonics, and the Supersonics got ripped out of their grasp. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... I, I don't understand. I, I'm going to be honest with you. And Seattle fans, maybe y'all can come through, hit the comment section, and let me know where I'm missing something. I don't understand the sympathy that Seattle gets. I mean, look at St. Louis. St. Louis now had a football team ripped from them more than once. More That's than true. once. D, you got to help me out. I don't know. I think I think the Cardinals was there at one point. The Rams was there at one point. Like, people keep ripping shit away from St. Louis. That's the true. Lunatics ain't even rapping no more. We don't know where Murphy Lee is, so I, I don't know... Why don't we feel that same way about St. Louis? People are so sympathetic about Seattle. Seattle got other shit I, popping I, I, up there, I, I, bro. I don't think shit. St. Louis is one of those towns. St. Louis oh, is more, to me, bro, to me, St. Careful. Louis is more of a baseball town. They love their baseball there. Wow. So you wow. in Hold on. Let me make sure those. I get this right. You are bro, insinuating that St. Louis, that St. Louis will not support. Oh, that's. Ooh. I'm not saying they won't support. I'm just saying I don't think. I don't think they miss it. Like, Seattle miss basketball what? up there. They have football. <laughs> if you was to take, it's like Chicago is one of those cities. Los Angeles is those cities. That, uh, that's why they keep cities? trying to get all these teams back to L.A. A team leave L.A., a team always go back to L.A. L.A. is one of those cities. New York, one of those cities. St. Louis. Miami. Hit us up, St. Louis. St. Louis is up there with those, with those cities, bro. How many teams have I left St. No Louis, on St. Louis. You... I just think St. Louis is... The Cardinals. I just think it's the St. Louis Cardinals. I think it's a baseball city. D, I don't care where we at in the show. At some point, I want to <laughs> know how many teams left St. Louis. Because I, I think you're wrong, LaPaz. I think St. Louis missed their football teams. And I think they was really hurt. I think they was hurt, bro. I mean, they, bro, the Rams know. just got nice. You don't Bro, think you just said they done got their team took about two, three times. They used yeah. to it. They don't miss them. Oh, wow. They know somebody else coming. That's somebody terrible. else coming. That's they know terrible. somebody else coming, bro. Well, I'll let you tell it. It's another baseball team. It needs to be because that's a baseball town. Let's, Who, what let's what is their baseball team? Who is it? The Cardinals. The St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, yeah. I knew that. All right. Baseball is trash, go. though, by the way. Let me say Big that. Facts. Baseball we don't trash. talk that mess on this show. But Spade, <laughs> got to take it. Moving on, we taking it to the top five. Y'all know top fives return, and we are not pleased with the power forwards. Bro, bro, speak in the league for yourself. Today. I'm pleased, bro. Bro, you pleased with the power forwards in the league today? Yes. With no, I'm pleased. Stop it. Stop I love it. these guys. Spade. I would hang with all these think. guys. We talking top five power forwards. Y'all already know we giving y'all the eye test. We giving y'all pre our prediction for this year. We giving y'all yep. what we think these players are going to do. Yep. Who's going to be the top guy? The yep. top five guys. Who are yep. our top five guys? Yep. Babe. Yep. I'm go we're going to go five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. You want to start? I don't really do math, bro. You just kind of. What bro, was that give formula again? Give, give me a um. Give me an honorable mention if you if you have one, and give me your your fifth guy. All right, let's do this. Uh, my honorable mention, man, would easily be on my list, but the kid is hurt right now. I think he's going to come back, and I think he's going to be fine, but I, I don't really like snatching people up straight off their hospital bed with, with their crutches and being like, you top five. I just feel like that's disrespectful to all the guys who are all out there. Now, I may or may not be throwing shade at the fact that last week on this show, the Paris had Boogie Cousins top five center. We, you know, Boogie ain't even playing. You know, so maybe I'm throwing shade at LaParis. Maybe I'm not. But honorable I'm mention, man, shade, I, I want to put Chris Stapps in my honorable That's fine. I hate the blockers. <laughs> I want to put Chris Stapps in my honorable mention, man. You know, this guy, I ain't got to talk about it. Y'all already know what he bring to the table if he out there on the floor. He, I ain't never seen anything like him. It's crazy. They kept trying to compare him to Dirk. And I looked at this guy and said, this guy's way more athletic than Dirk. Way more athletic than Dirk ever was, you know. And with his height, with his athleticism, with his versatility, he really could be that player that could be the next big star at that power forward spot. He's injured right now. We got to wait and see how he's going to come back, how much he's lost, if anything at all, and mentally how he approaches the game when he gets back. So I got him honorable mention. If he's healthy, top five easy. But my fifth best power forward going into the 2018-2019 season for that, man, you got to come right down here where I just moved, bro. You got to come down to Orlando. You got to look at Aaron Gordon, and I'm going to be honest with you. 
I think AG that dude, bruh, and I would have him higher, but I don't trust Orlando. Orlando played this dude at the small forward spot last season. I'm going to tell you my problem with that. The athleticism that, that he got at the four, which makes him faster than your average power forward, they negated that by playing him at the damn three. I mean, hmm. I don't know what Orlando doing. They're going to find a way to goof him up, but he's still going to produce, and for that reason, I got him at number five. Fifth best power forward, bro. Well, my honorable mention, this is crazy. Oh, you're going to copy my paper. I'm out. Bruh. <laughs> this is crazy. You got my honorable paper. mention is definitely Chris Tapps. And the difference is, Spade, the difference is between Chris Tapps being an honorable mention and not on the top five from Boogie is Boogie. I think Boogie going to come back. I think if the Knicks think it's no point of bringing Chris Tapps back for 20, 30 games, if they already stinking it up. Why would they stink it up? The East just got easier. I know, but I'm saying I think if if the Knicks is stinking it up, when Chris, like they projected him to come back after the All-Star break. So yeah. if, if the Knicks are stinking it up, I don't think there's no point of risking it, bringing it, bringing Chris Tapps back to uh, try and compete for an eighth spot. That's in my opinion. So you basically saying you expect so that's why he's an honorable mention because he may not even play this year. He so you expecting play. them to stink. So Kevin Knox didn't impress you. Allen Iverson 2.0, aka Kevin Trey Knox Burke, doesn't back, impress back you. Them boys to the playoffs. They got Allen Iverson 2.0, aka Trey Burke. Shit. They got THJ. They got Cantor. They got Cantor. The and I and I like I like the coaching staff. It's it not don't about sound the like it. It's just about if. It's if they stink. If the Knicks stink, I don't see Chris Tapp. I, I don't think they bring Chris Tapp back. With okay. that being said, the number five guy on my list is Aaron Gordon. I think Aaron Gordon is um, a, a top five guy in this league. Um, I, I struggled with my list because I didn't know whether to put him there, uh, him at five or him at four, uh, or vice versa with my number four guy. But at five, I have... Aaron Gordon, I think he's their best player. I think he's definitely took a step forward last year. He did have some little um, injuries that I that I didn't like, but Aaron Gordon is definitely a uh, uh, a top power forward in this league, especially when you look at the guys on this list. At number four, I had, a, this, I had this guy on my list last year. Me and Spade kind of went back and forth because he had LA on his list, and LA didn't make my list, and this guy took LA spot. And I'm talking about Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin is the number four guy in this league. I actually thought last year that the trade to Detroit would actually, you know, make make Blake Griffin. You know, Detroit got a lot of money tied up in those, those that front court between uh, Drummond and Blake Griffin. And I thought it was going to take Blake Griffin back to old Blake. But Blake is really trying to be a perimeter big now. Like, he do not... Want to put his back to the basket no more? How he used to play in in the Clippers, and that kind of dropped him down on my list, man. I want Blake Griffin to go back to old Blake. I want him to put his back to the basket. He can still shoot threes, but it, it seemed to me that this guy do not want to be in the post anymore, and that kind of dropped him on my list. And for that reason, he could have easily been number five, and AG could have been four. But that, for that reason, he's number four on my man. list, babe. He had dropped my man back. He was finna drop him to five. That's tough. All right, I mean, I, I guess I can respect that. Let me give you my number four, man. My number four is Kevin Love. I, I'm not going to give him no big walk up. I'm just, just going to throw his name out there, Kevin Love. Ke we know what Kevin Love can be. We've seen him play at a pretty high level. What I'm concerned about with Kevin Love, and the reason why I got him back at four is I don't know, I don't know who he is anymore. He had to change who Kevin Love was in order to be a teammate of LeBron James. And now that LeBron is gone... Does he try to bulk back up to try to go back to the old Kevin Love? Do they have enough pieces to allow him to be the stretch big that he is? Is durability issues going to continue to somewhat hinder what he could be? I mean, these are just question marks we don't know about him. One thing we do know is he, he can definitely play. Say what you want to say about him. He can play. He can stretch the floor. And he can, he can board. So I, I feel confident that he's top five. I don't feel confident that he's higher than four. And for that reason, I got him at four. I know he's going to be a focal part of that offense this year. He's probably going to be their number one scoring option. But I don't know. Like, I just feel like one of the things that made Kevin Love work in Cleveland was LeBron James' ability to attack, break the defense, and kick it out to Love. 
I like Colin Sexton. I'm a Sexton fan. That kid played high school ball right here in Georgia. Well, I'm saying right here. I ain't there no more, but right in Georgia. I don't know right now that they have a threat enough to make a defender leave Kevin Love on the perimeter. Like, I'm looking at that Cleveland team. Who the hell on that team going to make me leave Kevin Love for three? I just I don't know what that's going to do to his game. So I got him back at four. Now, I'm going to do something different. Last year, I didn't have this guy in my top five at all. We argued. LaPere said, this guy's going to be great. He's going to be great. And I said, man, this dude is washed. And I, I saw the light. I want to come back. I wasn't wrong for last year. LaMarcus Aldridge definitely deserved to be on that list. But for this year, I'm going to tell you why Blake Griffin is not only on my list, but why he's number three. I had, I had a moment. Dog. I once was blind, but now I see. Blake Griffin is not afraid to play physical. Blake Griffin hasn't lost his athleticism. He hasn't lost his physicality. What he realized is playing the way he was playing, he ain't going to be able to last super long playing that way, bro. I think Blake Griffin sat back and he looked at the so guys. That's why he's hanging on jacking threes like that. I, I do. I, I definitely think. Now, hold up. With that being said, bro, I got his numbers from last season. I think this is his last season numbers. Statman D helped me out. But I think he averaged 21, seven boards. Six dimes? Shit, if he doing that, preser preserving himself so that he can have a longer career, continue to chase that bag, not only can I not hate it, I, I kind of love it. I kind of respect it. The Detroit Pistons as a team, I don't know that they're going anywhere. I don't know that they're a threat in the East, even though LeBron is gone. I still don't look at Detroit and go, hey, this team could possibly come out the East. I don't see that. I don't say that when I look at Detroit. But what Blake Griffin is doing is saying, you know what? We got some cats in this league in their late 30s still getting that bag. If I keep, every time I get the ball, putting my head down, pulling right trigger, sprinting to the basket and trying to get a poster, I don't know if I'm going to last that damn long. I'm kind of injury prone over here. You know, in, in L.A. with the Clippers, everybody was kind of getting hurt. I don't know about everybody. I think DeAndre, for the most part, was straight. But Blake had some naggy injuries here and there, whether it was him on the court or him punching somebody and breaking his damn hand. But he had injuries here and there. And I think at some point he realized, you know what? And I hope he, I don't want to put words in this man's mouth, bro, but LaParis, you got to think. If he playing for the Clippers, over there in the West that was stacked, and even now with the Pistons, you got to be thinking, I can go out here and go balls to the wall for us to still not make the postseason to be a first-round exit, or I can put up 21 a game, preserving myself, and chase that bag till I'm damn near 40? Shit. I'm out here on the, I'm out here on the perimeter, fam. I'm going to knock this three down. And for that reason, man, I got Blake Griffin at number three power forward going into this season. And he do need the bag because we know Blake Griffin just had a kid. And I think she getting Woo, that child. He got took too. to the woodshed on that damn yeah, I kid. Think she but like I hope it was worth it. $250 a month or something. Woo, something I hope it was crazy. worth it. Because they got Good sex dolls now. Space. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope it was I, worth I it, it, though. They got sex I dolls. Get, I get it. With, uh, I get it. In the league, the league just changed, man. I'm an old head. It did. The league just changed. All these bigs are shooting threes. I seen JaVel McGee in the corner taking threes the other night. Yeah, man. So, the league hey, changed. Bro, this league changed. It's just like, you know how you and I, we we grew up in the Steve Atwater running lot era of the NFL. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's changed. And I guess that's just part of getting older, man. You look at this game and you go, eh, this ain't the game I grew up on. It's different. So, I respect Blake. Yeah, I guess the older, older heads is like, man, it ain't used to be no three-point line. Not going to be out here shooting right. crazy. Look at these chunks. <laughs> so, Kirby scoring 50 points. Uh, uh, Will Chamberlain used to get 50 points in the paint. That's what they saying. Hell but, yeah. Spade, at number three, I got Kevin Love. I think Kevin Love is in for a big season, man. It's his team. I think we're going to see a, mix of, a mixture of Cleveland Cavaliers, Kevin Love, and... Um, Minnesota Timberwood, Kevin Love. I think we're going to see some 2020 games. I think some of those games will come back. I'm not mm. saying he about to average, you know, 20 and 20. But I think here and there, we're going to be like, damn, Kevin Love had 20 and 20 tonight. I think we're going to see those type of games. My only concern with Love is the health. We know he lost weight to be this guy around the perimeter because of LeBron. Now mm. LeBron is gone. So I think he got to get his ass back in the box. He can get I, seconds now. You think he can yeah, get think, seconds think, at the dinner table now? Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. Like, he can grab rebounds. Like, he can get those little easy putbacks. Not putback dunks, but I'm just saying offensive rebound layups. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he ain't put back dunking like Bron. But I'm just saying, I think we in for a big year for uh, Kevin Love. And I'm a, I'm a hot take, hot take today. I uh -oh, think Kevin Love, I think Kevin Love backpacks those boys to the playoffs. I think they makes mm. the playoffs. <laughs> wow. That's... Yeah. 
Yeah, wow. I think he backpacks them to the playoffs, bro. Wow. I ain't saying they about to be a high seed, maybe an eight for seven seed, wow. seven eight seed, but I think they get in. Spade. Wow. At number two, yeah, I know I was hard on Lamarcus Aldridge, man. Two. I was hard on this guy. Man. At number two, I gotta put L.A. Man, Spade, you called it last year. You said Lamarcus Aldridge. It's going to have a big season, and I was like, shit. Now I know I'm putting LaMarcus Aldridge this high on my list. I know he about to be trash. I know it. I hope not, man. I got LaMarcus Aldridge at number two, Spade. He had a phenomenal. You know what? Every time every time Popovich did an interview last year, and they was trying to talk about Kawhi, Poppy wanted to talk about Kawhi. He wanted to talk about the players that was there, and the first player he mentioned was LaMarcus Aldridge. And if we remember correctly... Yeah. Lamarcus Aldridge wanted a trade last year as well, and Pop said, "Hold up, you is you got the keys. Draw this mug and yep. spade." He drove him to the playoffs, so I gotta get kudos to Lamarcus Aldridge, and for that reason, he's number two on my list. Yeah, I I definitely agree. I don't, I don't agree with what you got him, but but I agree with your reasoning for having him so high. For me, man, at number two, man, I got Draymond Green. Now, it, it's well documented. I'm not a huge Draymond Green fan. Um, you I, don't think, I don't think Dre's a bad player. Let me make sure I go ahead and put this out there because if anybody, Thug, finna come to the comment section and oh, get me. Yeah. He's, he's yes, our he local is. Golden State Warrior fan. Thug, hit me out. Draymond's a good <laughs> do-it-all player. He's got a decent enough outside shot to keep the defense honest. You ain't really like, oh, my God, Draymond's open. But he can keep, he can keep the defense honest from out there. He's got a nose for... Getting to the loose ball, a uh, uh, rebound, he can be a, a little bit of a dog in that way. And if anything, he understands, like, that mental aspect. He know how to get into his opponent's head. He do a little bit of everything. My issue with Draymond Green has always been that he gets superstar treatment when I feel like he benefits from being on a team flooded with superstars. That's not Draymond's fault. That's not his fault, but it is the case. I can't sit here and say that if you took Draymond, if you plucked Draymond off that team, and dropped his ass in Atlanta, I don't see him doing some amazing shit with the Hawks. I just don't. I just don't. And I, mean, I don't feel like anybody... Do. Can anybody do anything amazing with the Hawks? Trey Young can. I mean, aside from LeBron. Trey Young can. Shit. You see that nutmeg pass the other night? Boop. Beautiful. Anyway, let me stay on task here. Trae Young I got Draymond as the wins. number Sorry, two... Sorry, MK. Sorry, MK. <laughs> I got Dre as the number two power forward. Dang, nothing to hold your head down about Dre. That's good stuff. But number one, man, let's be clear here. Number one goes to LaMarcus, delete social media and focus on the NBA Aldridge. <laughs> Ever since that man deleted Twitter, he's been a man amongst boys. Let me find out. Shit, I might need to delete Twitter. Maybe I'm a better everything I do without this damn app. This devil app, boy, I tell you, I might delete it tonight. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, but it sounds good. Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge, one of the reasons why I told you last year, and I don't know if you remember, but one of the reasons why I told you last year I felt like he was going to do it real grande is because they said that he called a meeting with Popovich before the season and told Pop, like, I want, I want a bigger role. Like, he went to Pop like, yo, give me the rock. And Pop said, cool. And I was like, oh, shit. Anytime a guy schedule a meeting with Greg Popovich and you tell Pop, like, look, I, I know you an accomplished coach and I know you know how to do things, but... Here's what I, I think you need to give me the rock more. I think it took balls to do that, and I, I knew he was ready for action, and he showed it last season. You know, the Spurs did not have Kawhi much last year. I think he only played nine games, and in that time, man, I'm going to tell you, uh, L.A. said, I don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit if Kawhi show up or he, or he don't. I got it. You know what I'm saying? He also led the league in points from the post last season. The Marcus Aldridge, number one power forward in the league, and it's crazy because this guy once was a Chicago Bull. Am I right, LaParis? He got drafted by the Bulls, but we traded him on draft night. Right, so, so for a little while, he was a Chicago Bull. I mean, right? it wasn't even a little while. It was a draft night trade. You want to claim, you want to say he got drafted by the Bulls? Bro, that's bro, fine. For a little he while. didn't play for us. Bro, for a I little mean, while, he was a Chicago Bull, right? For like, stay for like six minutes. So like that's the a little while. came off the board. That's a little while. I mean, it ain't even six minutes. Like, how long they get you in the NBA to pick? Three six minutes? minutes? Tw six. Two minutes? About six minutes. I feel like yeah, he was so a Chicago I mean, Bull for a little while, and I feel like deep down inside, the reason why you didn't get that man the number one power forward position true. that he deserves is because you were salty that y'all traded that man away for who? That's Tyrus not, Thomas? Spade, who did y'all trade this man for? A fire guard in packs for the yeah. past 
Yeah. Since we still had Derrick hey, Rose. I know it hurts Since you, man. St- and I, I want you to know that right here on this platform, you can get that off of you. You ain't got to carry that alone. As a Chicago See, fan, at, it at hurts number you. One, okay. At number one, I have Draymond Green. Stop Draymond it. Draymond Green, bro. Out of these guys, if I Over had to LA. pick one guy, if I had to pick one guy, I'm picking Draymond Green. He got wow. heart, man. He got heart. He played defense. Defensive player of the year, if I'm not mistaken, was he? I don't think so. You better get I, that. I, you better get that man D to look that one up. I think he was up there for defensive <laughs> player of the year. He might have didn't win. He might have didn't win. Oh, I mean, but he might have been I, up there. I, I mean, yeah, I think he was up there for defensive player of the year. Maybe Rudy Gobert won it. I don't remember. I think Rudy. But I think I think he's one of those guys. And for what Golden State, for what Golden State need, I think Draymond Green is perfect. And I think we in for another solid, almost triple double type of year from Draymond Green on some twelve points, ten rebounds, eight, seven, eight assists. You know what I mean? I think Draymond Green is in for another one of those years, and for that reason, he's my number one power forward this year, Draymond Green. I hear you. I mean, go ahead, Spade. Slander him. You know, I, like, I just, I, I don't dislike him. this dude, bro. Let me ask you this though. I just want to ask you one question, and then we can move forward. Can Draymond I'm not gonna go attack you for your do, opinion. No, this is a democratic no, show. I'm not gonna he, attack you for your opinion. Wins. I just got one question though. If you took Draymond and you dropped him over there in San Antonio, you think they straight? I think they straight because of their system, and I think Pop is smart enough to figure to, out what 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 Draymond Green is good at. And going to put him in, in, in a position he good to be at? successful. I do, Spade. What's he good at? D- what you mean? Defensively, he got he plays defense. He's uh he can score. You know <laughs> You're struggling. Like, th- you struggling over there. I- I'm just saying. I, I think I think Popovich is smart enough to figure out what he's good at and going to put him in a position to win. Okay. I'm going to put San- now so- you saying send him to Atlanta. It's going to be tough for that dude to go down there to Atlanta and cook like Atlanta trash. Bro. Sorry, MK. Bro, bro. Okay, so it sounded to me like you you just saying Greg Popovich is a great coach. We knew that. He that is. Do with Draymond, bro. I got shit to do with Draymond. Not... But you said Draymond. San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. You're right. That's but my do bad. I think anyway. Draymond? Do I think Draymond Green could go to Atlanta and eat? No, I don't, I don't think anybody could go to Atlanta and eat aside from Brian. Trey Young finna eat this year, bro. Bro, to eight, he gonna eat eighteen wins. J- oh. Q put eighteen James Wood, um James Winston's who want to eat a W's up there, and that's <laughs> well, the long season. You gotta specify what go down there and eat mean. I didn't know you meant get dubs. <laughs> I just thought you meant get buckets. Anyway, man, let's move on to the NFL. You All right, go. guys. Oh, we we got. Some- let me go ahead and interrupt let's real quick, guys. Back. I just want to let you guys know that we got Draymond Green with a defensive player year at least one, and he was also in consideration of it last year. Also, he's won one. You know, before you move on. He's won one. He's got one last yeah. year, the year before last. And then yeah. last year, he was also in consideration when uh, Rudy Gobert won. So you got to consider him, you know, again for this year, again for that. That's right. Also, just want to let you know that not one mention of Giannis the Greek freak was pretty uh, pretty crazy in but this little talk. Got him as a small forward. Yeah, got him as a small forward. Yeah, he's going to play small. We got okay. him at small. Okay. okay. So okay. he'll definitely be on the small forward list. Uh, the St. Louis thing. is crazy. Now they got, okay. Don't tell me they put Greek freak at power forward now. This is great. Greek Freak is, is labeled as a power four, so I'm gonna let you guys little get a little. You guys get a pass on that one. Yeah, I, I got him as a three. Trust me, Greek Freak on somebody okay. top five. Okay. Hey, before, that. before we move on, I want these okay. guys to lead. They top five power forwards in the league. I was this close. I was that close to putting Lori Marketing, the real Chris Tatsporzingis, on my man, list. That close. You don't get out of here with that disrespect, it's man. Big. Me and okay. Chris Tatsporzingis both are coming. Okay. You wait till you wait till we do shooting guards and Zach Levine up there. You wait. Statman, St. Louis. How many teams have they lost? They lost so many teams that it's hard to count right now. So if you really want me to go through it, I can name them all. But as far as coming down to uh, football and basketball, we got about a few teams on both sides of the sport. So Ooh. there's a lot to count. Yeah, right so now. why we don't feel sorry for St. Louis? Like, I, I don't I'm like this double standard. I'm Everybody's you, like, oh, hey, Spade, I'm telling you, if, if the Cardinals was to lose St. Louis, leave St. Louis, they're right. I guarantee you, bro. Yeah, they because that's all I'm they damn got at this point. That's all bro, they got. I'm, Let's move nope. to the NFL. I'm fed It's because they don't care, bro. They don't care about football they, they care, basketball bro. like that. If, bro, you, if they take the Cardinals, they're right because they care. 
Bro, they, they care. care, bro. And I, I can't believe you. They don't you. care, bro. That's anyway, let's move on. They be like, oh, these mugs don't even care. We out. NFL news, man. Pete, in the last show, we talked about one of the topics was what's wrong up in Foxborough. And I, I think we both said right here on the show, hey, you're not you about to bait us. us. You ain't nope. about to bait me into nope. jumping in here I'm talking about some, in the tail I don't know bike. what's nope. going on. I told you. And it's crazy because LaPera said, Spade, they playing your Dolphins this week. Are y'all going to win? I said, who's at home? He said, Patriots at home. I said, I don't know because I, I know how they do. I know how they do. And, of course, they was able to win in convincing fashion. That's not what I want to talk about, though. We back to talk Brady this week because just one week after saying, what's wrong with Brady? We talk about the fact that Brady has tossed his 500th career touchdown pass as they rolled over the Colts. I was smart. You know what I'm saying? I got Brady on my fantasy football team. I put the man in the lineup. He did work. Spade, let's, let's talk about you leaving 100 points. Bro, bro, bench, bro. Stop putting my business in these streets, bro. Don't worry <laughs> about what I got on my that. bench. Bro, 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 bro. Relax. I'm the just bear. saying. Tom Brady is only the third QB in the history of the NFL to pass for 500 career touchdowns. And this man ain't through. He going to toss a few more. I hate to do it, LaParis, but I got to ask you. Is it time to start considering Brady the greatest quarterback of all time? You, I, 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 why are you ask me that? I, I got to ask you. you. Talk about Brady. You said you the football expert his, on this show. 500 touch. I think Brady is is one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Do I have him number one over Joe Montana? No, I don't. So Wait, you're gonna, I know what you're going to argue. You're going to argue probably Dan Marino is the no greatest probably. QB of all time. You said what? Ain't no probably. You know Dan Marino to go. Oh, my gosh. Stop this, baby. But listen, I mean, I, I, I know people going to kill me. I, Tom Brady is definitely a top guy. Maybe number two or three. Maybe number two or three. But I cannot put Tom Brady number one, man. I can't. I can't. Especially with all the controversy always surrounding the New England Patriots and their championships. Now, say what you want. They did win them. Can't nobody take that from them. But every time you looked around, it was always some BS with the Patriots. It was always some crap, whether it be Spygate or uh, uh, the Tuck Rule or Deflate Gate. It was it's always something. And to me, I mean, when it's always that little question... Brady has been phenomenal. 500 TD passes. He had to play those games. He delivered those passes. Can't take nothing away from them. But I can't put him number one on my list. Kill me if you want in the comment section. That's fine. He's not number one on my list, but he is definitely one of the best guys. Definitely one of the best guys. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah, space, I same that. question back to you. Oh, well, you already is he know. The goal? Uh, first of all, to me, you got to jump over Dan Marino. And I... Look, everybody, I've heard it from everybody. Folks come back and talk about, look how many yards so-and-so passed. And I have to remind people the NFL has changed. The defensive rules has changed. And the NFL, for those that don't know, because maybe y'all young and y'all don't know this, the NFL at some point said, you know what's exciting? Hits and touchdowns. They came back later and said, you know what's dangerous? Hits. So you know what's exciting? Touchdowns. So let's Let's change the rules a little bit so we can get more scores because that's exciting and we want to make our product more exciting. So don't think that they changed these rules for any other reason than for the fact that they wanted to make football more exciting. So you got middle of the field quarterbacks tossing the football to the tune of 4,000 4, yards, yards in a season. And that shit is... I'm sorry, I don't mean to be That's disrespectful to current quarterbacks because everybody in the NFL is an extreme talent. Everybody in the NFL better than me, hands down. But let's keep it a bean. Dan Marino, as a second-year player, this kid was 19, 20 years old in the AFC in the, with the Miami Dolphins with not really big, big-name receivers and was throwing for like 5,000 yards in his second year in the league to me. I, I don't see a quarterback that can pass to Dan Marino, and I probably never will. Am I biased? Absolutely. I'm a Dolphin fan. But I'm telling you, the, the numbers don't lie. They say men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Look at his numbers, dog. Dan Marino was doing shit as a youngin'. It's just, 
unreal. And every time people throw other names in the hat, what about what about Elway? I go look at Elway's interceptions. Elway threw a ton of interceptions. Brett Favre threw a ton of interceptions. I don't really want to hear much about those guys. I would entertain Joe Montana. Of course, my, my bounce back there is Joe Montana had Hall of Famers all around him. That's not Joe Montana's fault, but you have to factor that in. And I will entertain Tom Brady. Tom Brady's too accomplished for me to not entertain him as one of the greats. He is definitely one of the greats. But to put him over Dan Marino, that would be asinine. He's not better than Dan Marino. He's not. You know, Sorry. I had an argument in a barbershop about this, this Shane argument right here. They was, it was talking about Tom Brady and talking about, like, oh, these guys are throwing for 5,000 yards a season. And I'm like, that yeah, was the design. throwing 40, That's what they 50 wanted. times a game. Yeah. That's like, the design, you gotta, bro. You gotta, and so, my, what what day did Patrick Mahomes play? I think it was a Monday night game. That was either Sunday night or Monday night. I don't remember what day it was. But mm -hmm. Mahomes played, and they was talking about how many times. I think Mahomes had a game he threw forty something times this year. And they, I Troy Aikman was the was the uh, commentator, and the dude said, "Troy, do you know you never passed the ball forty times in your whole career? Because they wasn't throwing like that back then." None of them, except for like, except for Dan Marino. Dan and you Dan could Marino jam was really the only shit guy out there receiver back then, tossing bro. that thing like that. Nobody could, else was really running, running like that. You could Nobody. jam the shoulder joint off a wide receiver back then, man. <laughs> you could run back there <laughs> yeah, and club bro. a quarterback upside the head. Like the rules yeah, wasn't, definitely wasn't was changed like to make the game more exciting. I'm not upset about it, but to me that changes the way I look at things. I mean, I got, I still got Joe Montana there. I know somebody gonna go in that comment section, but Brady X Y Z, you can leave it in there, but that's not gonna change my opinion. Brady is definitely in the conversation. He's still not number one to me. Me either. You ready Congrats, to move on, bro? Yeah. Please. Space. Get this shit off time. Gotta baby. take it back. <laughs> Gotta take it back to Pittsburgh. It's so much stuff going on in Pittsburgh, and I'm scared because it might cost Mike Tomlin his job. For real. You scared? Space. I thought you wanted Tomlin to get that. You said Tomlin, get some no. man out there on the I stage don't want Tomlin Tomlin to get fired. Out. I don't want Tomlin to get fired, man. I like okay. Tomlin. And I okay. actually think Tomlin is a good coach. Okay. I, he got I, I said Spay, I said on our I think it was either the show before I think it was the show before last. I said he gotta get control of this team and it just seemed like it's still going a little bit crazy. You guys didn't know A B and Big A B had words about Big Ben and they connection saying they've been somewhat spotty. They something like Wi Fi out there. And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm interested to get Spade thoughts there. And if you guys didn't know, a report came out uh, this week also that Le'Veon Bell, the Steelers offered Le'Veon Bell three years, $47 million, uh, $47 million contract in the summer that Le'Veon Bell, I guess, turned down. He, he didn't sign, so I guess he turned it down. But that would have took his contract to five years, $70 million with a... Uh, $30 million over the first two years with a $10 million signing bonus, meaning as soon as he signed that dotted line, they will cut that man a check for $10 million. Spade, I got to get your thoughts about both situations. A.B. and Ben, connection. Le'Veon Bell, I mean, what's what's up with Pittsburgh, man? I wish I knew. Let, let me talk A.B. first because I said this about A.B. a couple of weeks ago when A.B. had his blow up on the sideline. I like Antonio Brown, man. I like him. He's a talent. I like that he was that player that wasn't really high in the male Kuiper type and Shea talks and just, you know, through hard work was like, I'm going to be a force in this league. He's not the biggest. He's not the fastest. He's not the strongest. But he goes out there through, like, great work ethic and obviously God-given ability. He's one of the best receivers in this league. He's also from Miami, which, you know, I got a connection with folks from Miami. They like my family. But I got to keep it a step. Wait, 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 wait. You, wait, he a king? No way. No, 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 no. He didn't play at Miami, but he's from Miami. Oh, oh, oh. I was he, about to say. No, no, no. Man, man you, if you played at Miami, bro, you done heard that fly. shit so many times. No, 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 no. But he's from that. He's from Miami. That's oh, okay. why he I got, was I got in. It. You know, I'm Drake had the guys playing video recorded in Miami. That's why AB was in it. But anyway, stand okay, on tag. AB, to me, he, he's starting to look like that guy that's a fun guy when things are going good. And, and like the guy you don't really want to kick it with when things are going bad. And it's easy to be that guy. I'm guilty of being that guy at certain times in my life. I think we all are. But I had a person tell me like the true measure of a man is how he act when everything is going wrong. It's easy to be a great guy when you winning. Shit. I mean, 
who can't be a lovable guy when shit is going right. It's, people really judge you on how you handle tragedy. Not necessarily tragedy, but how you handle things going wrong. Man, A.B. don't look like he handled things going wrong well, dog. And it's, and it's changing the way I'm looking at A.B. And I just, I don't like that. I mean, A.B., you, you. I ain't telling you to be who I want you to be. But I'm saying, as somebody who's a fan of the guy, I don't like to see who he is when the Steelers don't look good. I don't like that guy. I just don't. Now, as far as Le'Veon, look, man, you and I got a rule on this show, LaParis. A person is worth whatever right. they can get. And somebody in Le'Veon is telling him he can get more. And I guess that's why he didn't sign. You have to be very careful. I know this ain't the same sport or the same era. But once upon a time was an all-star by the name of Latrell Sprewell who uttered these last words. I got I to gotta take care of my family. I got to do what's best for my family. Sprewell walked away from a deal. I don't know the exact deal, but it was pretty lucrative. Walked away from millions of dollars because he needed to take care of his family. He never got another offer after that. So I don't think that's going to happen to Le'Veon here. But it's, it's always a tug of war, man. Like you, you set a price probably a little bit higher than you're expecting to get. They undershoot. You come back. Like, that's the game. You do it when you buy cars sometimes. You do it when you buy houses. I give you this. Nah, I only take this. You go back and forth. You go back and forth. Somebody in Le'Veon ear has told him he can get better than this deal, and I hope that person's right. I'm with you. It sounds like a great deal to me, but shit, I'm broke as hell. So I don't know if I'm the right person to ask. I mean, shit, I'd have signed yesterday. <laughs> I'd, have signed, I'd have signed the deal that he walked away from. But, I mean... I just hope I hope it works out for him, man, because I'm 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 starting to feel like I don't I don't know if they're gonna be able to make this thing work, man. I, I really think it could be a situation where Le'Veon finds himself in a new place. Now I know he said he's expected to play by week eight yeah, at the latest, back right? Week seven, that's the bye week, so he's about to get a check, a free check for a game that he don't have to play. He's gonna get that bye week check, and I guess he'll be suited up the, the following week. So I think they bye week is the set is week seven. So that's when he's coming back to get that free check. But Spade, I, what I want, what I want you to do is look up what Gurley got. Like, what was what was Gurley contract? I want to, I want to know what Gurley contract was. Cause when I read this thing about Le'Veon Bell, I'm like, Spade, thirty mil the first two years. Even if you get thirty mil the first two years, even if they be like, all right, the third year he losing yeah. a leg, he can still get another contract from another team. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Do you think it's about that? You think maybe Gurley I mean, got more and he's telling himself, I'm better than Gurley? We talked about it on the show before, and Le'Veon Bell, it was it was rumors out of Le'Veon Bell camp from, from ex, you know, the you know the rumors from the experts were saying that Le'Veon Bell didn't have a problem with the money. He had a problem with the guaranteed money. So I want to see what Gurley, I want, I want to know what Gurley got guaranteed and see if it was anywhere close to that because I don't, I, Five years, seventy million dollars. You get thirty million in the first two years. That sounds sweet to me. That sounds sweet. As far as AB and Ben, I don't like it either, Spade. And I, I'm an AB fan. I had AB as a top guy in this league, and he still is. He still is. But it seemed like a, AB see a, you know some other other people getting a little bit of shine. We know week one, Connor came out there had that good game. They was kind of on Connor. Everybody was on Connor. They did a big story about him. How he fought cancer and came back, and his his uh, rise to becoming the starting back to the um, for the Steelers. And I feel like he, I, I don't want to. I hope I'm wrong. I feel like he's a little jealous of Juju Spade. I I hope mm. I'm wrong, but I Spade when Juju scored touchdowns and get passes and stuff, I feel like I'll never see A B around him like giving him a five or nothing. And that that could just be me he might be somewhere too deep. <laughs> Trying to get in too deep, but I see when AB scored that touchdown the other the other week, and the first dude over there was Juju, and I'm like, I don't see that same energy from AB to Juju that I see from Juju to AB, and I feel I hope I'm wrong, but I feel like he a little jealous, and if that's so, I don't like bro. that, bro. You might be on to something. I think when Juju scored, AB might be somewhere eating a banana. You, I, I, talking about some. And, I don't and, like that shit. I right want to see. I don't like they that. They're play, of course. And I want to see if Juju catch a pass or something. I just want to see AB. I want to see if AB come over there, give him a five, or say, you know, pat him on the helmet. Or if he score, I want to see if AB come over there. Because I haven't, from what I've been noticing, and I might have missed it. We know the cameras don't get all the angles. I don't know how. It, it's cameras everywhere. I want to see if AB come over there, if Juju score a touchdown, and give him a little pat or a pat on That's the a good point. That's a damn good point. That's a good point. 
All right, guys, just want to get in between. So just let you know that uh, Gurley actually had like a $60 million contract. Hey, come on. $45 million dollars guaranteed. Ooh, come on. Just let you know that. Come on. If, if I don't know. I, I got Le'Veon Bell as the best That's also a six-year contract baby. where he's locked up. Okay. It's also it's also what, D? He's also locked up the okay. year 2023 and as well. he's so, also uh, younger. Like, come on. He's also younger. Like, Le'Veon, if it... So you said he, he got what forty five million guaranteed, man? Come on, man! Mm. Thirty million dollars the first two years. If if you if they don't like you, they gonna cut you that third year. I, I don't know, Spade. I think Le'Veon Bell might have messed up. I think he should have signed that deal. I think he should have signed that deal. Let's I think see. that's good ass money for a running back. And I think, like I said, I think oh, Le'Veon Bell and somebody probably in. Le'Veon Bell ear, because I think Le'Veon Bell is the best back in the league. So I'm pretty sure somebody is in Le'Veon Bell ear saying, yo, you the best back in the league. Girl, he got 45 million. You need to get 60. You need to get 60. I don't know. I would have took that deal if I was Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I would have too. It, it does need to be said. This does need to be, this do need to be said. This is Le'Veon's quote-unquote Big contract right here. Now, Ty Gurley's younger. He's going to get another big payday. 23, 24? He's young, bro. This is it for Le'Veon. This is the one right here, bro. Might have messed up, this is the one. I don't know. I hope you're wrong. I hope I'm wrong, too. Cause I, I hope, hope you're I hope wrong. I'm wrong, too. Because I would have took, I'd have took two, $30 million the first two years, $47 million contract to make it to make it five years, $70 million? I think Le'Veon Bell messed up, bro. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Speaking of, let's so just to add another one, just to add another one on the rear. Ty Gurley is actually 24 with Le'Veon Bell being 26. So I think Le'Veon's only 26. Well. I thought he was 27 already. Oh, well, this 26 turned 27 in February. Oh shit! I don't know. He he might get another one. I don't know. Also, want to add in some numbers too. So you have uh, Marino as your top player. I just want you to know that he actually averages he actually averaged thirty four point five passing attempts right now with Mahomes. See what I'm saying? Point five passing attempts right now. So if you actually think of it, it's actually the same right now with Mahomes okay. with one game over forty passing attempts. Okay, so that passing attempts are the same, but the the defense is completely different. The way you could play receivers back Ain't when Marino played is completely different from today. You can't touch a damn wide receiver today. I mean, you and, we, and like we said, we knew not, we and knew Marino was threatening that thing. I guarantee you, go look at Troy Aikman passing attempts. I guarantee you, it's like twenty three. Another thing, too, that should be also mentioned, I feel like, when you talk about these two different things. It, it, I don't know how other people feel about this, and I'm going to tell you what's strange. I've never seen this brought up. Now, D, you and I had a conversation, and you were saying you don't like how if a defensive player just touched the face mask of an offensive player, it's a flag. But an offensive player can stiff arm the shit out of a defender, push his face mask straight up into the clouds, and that's legal. I'm going to tell you something else that's weird. If you're watching football this weekend, hopefully this show get up in time for you to watch this show before you start watching football. When you're watching football today, watch and count how many times offensive players, watch how many times receivers push off when the ball in the air. This shit is crazy to me that they don't get called often. Offensive players push off a lot almost every time the ball is in the air the offensive player push off i just feel like defenses de defenders they had more of a fair shot at playing defense back when i agree 200 no because cool if you look at it thursday night game the patriots played the Colts. sony michelle ran the ball he trucked the the, the coat safety in the the you know they got a referee in the booth now so the referee that was in the booth said that should have been a helmet to helmet on the offensive player, but they never call it. And the, the referee was like, they never, the referee in the booth said, they never call it, but they should call it. I think it's only been called like seven times since this rule has been into effect. They never call it on the offensive player, which isn't fair if you're a defensive player. That's why I said, if I was to play football, if I was to play football, I, first of all, I wouldn't play football now if I played football, but I wouldn't play football. I damn sure wouldn't be a defender, Spade. No way. It is, it's. But did you see what happened? That tight end. Who was that tight end? It was the Steelers tight end, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did ground? that to Conti. Yup. Oh, face yeah. mask. 
all yeah. face masks. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm, I'm ready to get off of this shit. I'm upset. <laughs> Let's move forward. I'm going to tell you what's strange, man. It's a lot of people to sit on either side of the fence with the Le'Veon Bell situation. It's some folks that feel like, oh, Le'Veon doing what he got to do. He looking out for self. I get it. And it's other folks that's like, Le'Veon being a little selfish, man. And whether or not you feel one way or the other with Le'Veon Bell probably impacts the way you look at this next guy. In this segment, man, let's talk about Earl Thomas, uh, perennial all-pro safety for the Seattle Seahawks. Once upon a time, a member of the Legion of Boom, that's no longer a thing right now, but very, very weird thing going on with Earl Thomas. So if y'all don't mind, let me backtrack. Let me give you a little bit of back history on what's going on here. Earl Thomas wants a new contract. He wants more money. This ain't the first time this has happened, though. Earl Thomas has wanted to get his contract restructured in the past, and the Seahawks have, have done so. They worked with him on it. Now, keep that in your back pocket. Cam Chancellor, loved the dude. When we used to do our top fives, he was always at the tip top of my damn safety list. It was either him or my boy in Kansas City. I'm having a brain fart right Barry. now. But love Cam Chancellor. Yeah, Eric Berry. Eric Berry. Cam Chancellor was in a similar situation. He wanted to get his contract restructured. He wanted that bag. Seattle was like, what do we do? Cam Chancellor was talking about holding out. What do we do? Boom, Seattle said, boom, here you go. We gave, we're we giving you the bag. As soon as they do that, Cam Chancellor gets a, a neck injury. That's so strange. We talked about it here on the show. Cam Chancellor is kind of retired, but he's not really retired. He, he's, he can't play. He's not going to play, but he's still receiving money from the Seahawks, and he still is a person on their roster. He has to be. Now, it's some things that I can't – it's a long story about that, but the Seahawks obviously feel a little bit burned about that. They don't blame Cam Chancellor for getting hurt, but obviously the Seahawks, they, they got a business here. You want to you wanna win games? You want to pay people? Like I said, man, it's a back-and-forth thing. You definitely want to – tug of war with it all right here comes earl thomas earl like yo i want to get my my contract restructured i'm one of the best free safeties out here i'm pretty sure he didn't say one of i'm sure he probably told him i'm the best free safety out here you got all these other free safeties getting new contracts they've leapfrogged with me i'm ready to get I, I want what i'm owed seattle like man be patient with us you know we're gonna we're gonna make something shake that ain't working for earl earl want that bag seattle looking like damn the last time we was in the same situation we just paid a guy who he ain't even play he can't even play for us no more so we scared to do that to you earl like we scared to pay you and i understand it from seattle standpoint i understand it from earl thomas standpoint earl thomas come out been playing phenomenal had a two-pick game against the cowboys hey he's been the best he's beautiful been the best beautiful season so far in the league this season he has he has and then, lo and behold, the man got injured. I think he broke his leg, Same bro. leg. And he's on the cart. Same damn leg. He's on the cart heading off the field. And he he says he's number one to his sideline, to the Seattle sideline, because he is upset because he feels like this injury now is not only going to hurt his chances of, of getting that bag that he wanted anyway, but let's keep it a stack. I think it's a contract year for Earl, right? Yeah. Is it a contract yeah. year or no? It's a contract year for Earl. So even if Seattle don't give him that bag, now he might look like damaged goods and somebody else might not give him that bag. And people are torn. Folks, it's like, this is exactly why Le'Veon shouldn't play. And this is other folks like, you know what? This is exactly why Seattle didn't want to pay him because they didn't know if he was going to get hurt or not. LaParis, it's a crazy situation. I, I know it's really no right or no wrong, but from where you sitting, how you feel I'm about this? I'm going to say shit, this bro? too. Earl Thomas said that the middle finger was not too... Not to his teammate. It was to management. It was the middle finger to the management. I just want to get, make that clear. It was to the management. Well, but, I mean, that's stupid. Let me stop you. Was management standing on the fucking sideline? I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you what Earl Thomas said. Like, don't kill the messenger. Don't Come 300 on, me. Come on, Earl. But that's what Earl said. Earl it was to management. Up. It wasn't to his teammate. Earl know what's up. It's just a, it's, Go ahead. It's a terrible situation all around. You want... You, you feel like the way Earl Thomas was playing, he deserved his money. Earl Thomas actually... Before, I'm going to tell you what, Spade. It's, I don't know if it's karma or not, but Earl Thomas actually came out like bef a little bit before this game. I might have been like maybe Thursday or Friday. Earl Thomas said, look, man, I'm not practicing. He said, if I don't feel like practicing, I'm not practicing. If I got a hangnail, I'm not practicing. If I got a headache, I'm not practicing. If I don't feel like practicing, 
I'm not practicing. And then you come out Sunday. Yep. He was playing well that game too, and he get hurt. I don't know if that's karma. I don't know. But, man, you just feel bad for Earl Thomas, man. Seattle going to be all right. They're going to finish paying Earl Thomas the rest of this year. And they probably going to cut bait with him like they did uh, Richard Sherman. Like like they like they did Michael Bennett. Like they did so many other players from that uh, defense. I think only like three players remain from like that team. Like It's like Doug Baldwin, uh, Russell Wilson, and Bobby Wagner. That's it. Everybody else is gone. I think Earl Thomas, Earl Thomas was one of them too. So it was those four guys. Everybody else is gone. Nobody else was there. But I just feel bad for Earl Thomas because you're right. Coming off, you break the same leg again. It's gonna be tough for you to be like for you. I mean, to get that NFL max, to get that NFL safety max. Coming off, you broke the same leg again. It's gonna be older. Yeah, uh, He's yep, yeah, more rehab, yes. a year older. I don't know, man. I think Earl Thomas may be about to, if he not, he about to turn 30. Woo. And and the crazy thing is, 30, 30 isn't that old at safety, Spade. We done seen corners. We seen corners play safety, and they last to like 36, 37. We seen Rob Woodson play with the Baltimore Ravens in his, until his damn near late 30s. I think he was like 35, 36, 37. So Earl could, could potentially... Yeah. I, I, you know, and we seen Rob Woodson come off of ACL. Remember, Barry had him one on one, and Barry shook him and tore his <laughs> knee all up. Like he tore everything up in his knee. So that's why they moved him to safety. So Earl Thomas could come back. Yep. I'm, I'm just concerned about him breaking that leg again. But we have seen guys last for a long time playing safety. I don't know. if We've seen guys last for a long time being like Earl Thomas hits, man. Earl Thomas go hit. He a ball hawk. He do. I, I don't know, man. I'm concerned about Earl Thomas. I, I know he's going to play a game, I mean, he, but I just don't know if he's going to get what he wants on that open market. I mean, I think he's at the, the best position for it, bro, because a lot of times that's – that's. I mean, we see corners. When corners lose a step, yeah, when they get older, safe. when they're not that guy anymore, you yep. go to free safety. you kind of the last line of defense. You get way back there. You kind of get a chance to get that, that eye <clears> in the sky type of, you know, view of what's going on. So – I think Earl will be fine. I hope and you Earl can't will be fine, teach bro. what guys like but Earl Thomas, Rob Woodson, you sure can. Uh, uh, Ed Reed, those guys got them ball hawk skills. You can't teach that. You either got it or you don't. Hey, first of all, dog, don't you never mention them subpar players in the right. same they, with Ed I'm Reed talking about as far as being life, ball guy. hawk guys. They gonna get the ball, life, man. Bro. You look at that. Earl, you look at yeah, Earl Thomas. You, you just next time you use a period and you make a second sentence. Don't you don't look, put their name bro, in the same sentence. Can I Ed talk, Reed. bro? You. I got him, Ed. <laughs> look, bro. You look at the the plays Earl Thomas was making against the Cowboys. He just seemed to always just find his way. The ball just yeah, finds him. You be like, damn, the ball gets yeah. stuck on his shoe. He gets he catches an interception. You don't teach that crap. It just happens. And he's one of those guys, man. So that's true. I don't know. That's true. I don't know, man. Hey guys, there's another thing to interrupt real quick. Uh, so Cam Chancellor. Only reason why he's actually still on the contract right now is because he actually has a guarantee. Of six point yeah. eight million dollars for this year. Ooh. He also has a guarantee for five point two million dollars next year. So therefore, that's Ooh. the reason why he hasn't announced retirement. Two more years. He probably won't get that back, Cam. Cam. Ooh. Get that back, Cam. Ooh, Cam, that's crazy. And he just on the roster. They know he's playing. They know he's getting, getting money. Back. It ain't a chance. Oh man. Hey, Spade. So look, LaParis. Matter of fact, LaParis and D, both of y'all. Before we move forward. Wait, what you said? Do you feel like Seattle should have should have paid them, or do you feel like Seattle was protecting their own personal investments? Like, whose side are you on? It's no right or wrong. I just want to know. You know, I'm on. I'm always on the player side. I'm always on the player side. But I understand. I understand Seattle's. You know, I understand, and especially that I feel like Seattle think and they money in this rebuilding stage. So why pay? Uh, we we know we're not going to be as good as we once were. So I think they in that rebuilding stage. That's why I felt like they. The same way I feel about Minnesota with Jimmy Butler. They should have just bust the move. Would've he would have been somebody else, probably. You said you wanted the second. Dallas or, or offered him offered y'all a second. It was reported last week before they played that last game where Earl Thomas got hurt that the Chiefs was making an offer for the dude. Like, just bust a move. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I mean, hindsight twenty. Yeah, I agree. Man. I agree. Hindsight 2020, man. 
And I just I just I, feel like I they feel, feel like, like they in this rebuilding stage anyway. So why not just trade them? What are you waiting on? Set Spade, Minnesota is pussyfooting around. They playing. What what is what is the Timberwolves yeah. waiting on? Bust a move. Bust a move. Well, they hoping Jimmy will change his mind. They hoping. Let's go ahead and move forward, bro. This next segment, my favorite. Let them it's know what's It's a pick em game, Spade. You came. First of all, they cheated. You only won because they cheated. We picked the Raiders in Cleveland. That was clearly a fumble by, by Carr. Clearly a fumble. Do you agree, Spade? I'm. <laughs> the NFL I mean, actually came out and apologized and said, we're sorry. We made a. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, like, yeah I'll bet. <laughs> I mean, we see bad calls every week, but that was a catastrophic one. Like they could have, they could have housed that joint, and it ended up. Cleveland ended up losing the game. We know Baker Mayfield had a had some turnover issues. He had some turnover issues, but Spade. So you back? It's two one, right? Yeah, it's two I'll one. Bet. Check the tape. I think it's two two. I'm pretty sure it's, it's two, not two two. It's two one. Check the tape. Right. Spade. This week right. we got two, a big one. one. We got FSU. Versus Miami. Versus the Canes. Nose Canes. Spade. <laughs> the game come on later today. Don't talk to me, bro. I'm celebrating. The game come on later today. <laughs> Spade, who you got and why? Okay. Who you got and why? But don't ask me no question. Don't ask me no question like this, bro. You know who I got. Bro, who you Kane's got and why? All day, every day. You know who I got. Canes. I don't give a shit. You bring Florida State. You can bring the Florida Gators. You can bring UCF. You can bring FIU, FUA, LMNOP, XYZ. Bring, all, bring them all. Give me the Canes. You know who I got. You know, Don't ask me who I got, bro. You almost just pissed me off. I almost walked off the damn set. Don't well, ask give me, who me my I damn nose, babe. And you can bring Hurricanes, Sugar Cane, Deadly Cane. It don't, don't matter. Thing. Bring them all. Bring them all. Go no. Let me tell you something. You gotta know when to stop going with your heart, young Spade, fella. First of all, I had a two-one lead. <laughs> you gonna I had a two-one lead, bro. I don't care. Well, 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 we tied today. He said, "Who you got?" Spade, who you got? I want to, I want I to know who you had. Nah, I mean, don't ask you're me, the bro. one don't picking with no your question, heart. Bro. You're the one picking with your turnover chain. I'm picking. That that chain is kind of fly. What y'all what y'all do on turnovers, bro? What y'all got? Y'all got some chalk. Y'all got like turnover chalk. Y'all get it right on the sidewalk or something. Spade, like, what y'all what y'all do? Do y'all even get time? We don't follow trends, bro. We don't follow trends. <laughs> Man, y'all been following trends since y'all got Deion Sanders. Bro, you bro. mad about us recruiting Deion? Been... You still mad about that? I'm not mad about y'all. I'm you happy still, y'all yo, got Deion thing, because finally y'all had Miami a player worth talking like about. Rack. If it wasn't for Deion, we wouldn't even know where the hell y'all school bro, was at. The where, coolest where thing that, the case ever did that? was let G Rag rap. That's the coolest thing they ever did. <laughs> hey, hey, D. You know what? Hey, D, I looked note. it up earlier before On this show. Note. I looked it up earlier before this show. But I want you to look up the last 10 games between the Nose and the Canes. And see, we've been kicking their ass busy. for he the last eight do. games. Bro, he busy, <laughs> We've been bro. kicking their ass None for the last busy, eight bro. years. Look, man, we did not go on our budget and hire a stat man to look up. We've been, ki- I like looked that. it up. Pointless, we've been kicking their ass for the last seven, eight years. Last seven, eight. Seven eight, bro, bro. You don't feel like that shit, bro. We was like the the, y'all first victory was last year. We before that we was kicking y'all ass for seven years. Our first that was our first in eight years, bro. That was y'all first victory against us in eight years. Bro, and you got the nerve to sit on this show and poke your chest out. You got the nerve to sit on this show and poke your chest out. (laughs) <laughs> what? We've been kicking bro, y'all ass for tired. eight years, bro. So, I mean, bro, what they got to do with the day? Y'all getting y'all ass whooped the day? We going to see. Okay. We going to see. Y'all getting, y'all give getting me that my ass nose. the day? Oh, 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 get my nose. First of all, first of all, yeah. that's disrespectful to Native Americans. Oh, my gosh. Here first we of go. all. First, first of all, all, stop this. First okay, of all. Okay, well, don't yeah. disrespect hurricanes, okay? So, just to come they in. They are to be D, respected. D, you good. Just to, just to come in. D, hey, D, go ahead, D. Just to come in. Last eight years. Last eight years, Florida State has Miami 7-1. to one. But I think it's worth noting right now that overall Miami leads 32-30 to 30 right now. Yeah. I, okay, nobody. All the games. Yeah, nobody yeah, I looked cares. it up before no, the show. Nobody, now, now, Miami do. <laughs> listen, no, no, Miami no, no, do have a two-game lead in the series. I think it's 32-30. to 30. They do have a lead. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, I do have a leave, but we've been I kicking thought. y'all ass we for the past on? seven years. Can we move on? Or you we've been kicking wanna, y'all ass for the past seven, seven years. Data. Congratulations you on your money last year. Data? Today it goes down. Today y'all go down. Let me tell you something, folks. This is the last segment of the show today. We he call like this to segment on. the strong arm like performer of the week. When we talking about you have trash to understand ass how important Hurricane, this award Sugar is. Kane, Danity Kane, it don't matter. Because these people want to hear. They want. They want to hear about this segment, bro. You you born in this segment for these people. They want to hear. I bet. Yeah. This segment called the Strong Arm Performer of the Week, man, and it is a very prestigious award in podcast land. Like they tried to duplicate this in other podcasts. But they shit pale in comparison to ours. You know what I'm saying? This is like Prince's Cut Diamonds, and they got that cloudy shit over there. <laughs> I have had actual athletes hit me up and tell me, like, bro, I've won ESPYs and all kind of shit. I don't even know what them awards at. I can't find that shit. But my strong on performer of the week is on my fireplace mantle. And I said, I really appreciate that, man, because when I get this award out, I don't, I don't let my fanism in the way or any of that other shit. I take this job serious and I give this award to the most deserving male or female responsible for making sure that they got their team to win. You got to win to get this award. We don't get this award to losers. This ain't no participation award, okay? I just got to let people know, LaParis, you on the hot seat. Who gets your strong on performer of the week and I'm, why? First of all, first of all, I'm not on the hot seat, okay? I'm not on the hot seat. To me, you are. To me, it was it was like because uh, you just be giving them shit out willy nilly, man. All, like they this guy right here will probably never make strong ball performer of the week again. Okay, he probably would never make it again. So I want to. I'm bro. taking it to Chicago, and I got Mitchell Trubisky. Oh, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Mitchell Trubisky went out there and threw 19 to 26 for 354 in six. Count it. Six damn TV, TDs. The Chicago Bears won yeah. 48 to 10 over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And let me tell you something. The Bucs wasn't fooling yeah. me. Okay? Jameis Winston is back. Bucks wasn't fooling me. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Did they eat a W? Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick wasn't fooling me. And for that performance right there, Mitchell Trubisky, 19 for 26, 354, and 6 TDs, you are my strong guard performer of the week. Mitchell Trubisky. Spade. Mitchell Trubisky will Bro, probably you, you never make the list again, ever. Well, you right and you wrong at the same time. Because something that rarely happens on this show is when one athlete collects two strong on performer of the weeks. And damn it, I'm giving mine the good old Mitchell wow. too. Holy shit, Mitchell. Holy shit. Mitchell, I ain't know you had it in you, bro. Not only did he throw for 350 plus oh yards and six TDs. This got to be a first. Any interceptions. Bro, this is I don't see anybody out there more deserving than Mitchell. Now, I do want to tell you this, Mitchell, in case you watching or listening to our podcast. I told the parents not to call you Mitch. He's about to call you Mitch. I said you put some respect on Mitchell name. He want to go by Mitchell. You call him Mitchell. <laughs> and after that performance, I'm calling you Mr. Trubisky. And for that performance, Mr. Trubisky, you are it's, my it's strong performer. It's crazy because I feel like week. a week, holy shit! I feel Mr. like a week or two ago, huh? I was kind of slandering Trubisky. And, and, that, that, somehow or another, that sounds very and possible. Then, and then he comes very back possible. and throws six of them things. He ain't six of them things on on Tampa. Poor Tampa. I mean, they just couldn't cover Burt, and they couldn't cover no damn. Everybody got a touchdown. They didn't cover hey, much Spade, of that was anybody. One of the weeks, that was the Cohen week when you left off, 100 points on the bench because you had Burt. went off. Bro, you got one more time to put my business in these streets, partner. It's going down. <laughs> just, I think that I was mean, the week that you left that on the bench, by the way. Bro. Okay. Bro, bro, bro. Spade. Bro, relax, bro. Any, anything else? You, before we close the show, D, if you want to, you know, plug yourself, social media, whatever, you can do that. This your moment, bro. This, yeah, this is your time. Get it, get it, get get, get your. Go ahead. My question. My question to you guys is who's going to win tonight's fight, man? Is it going to be I'm Connor? Gonna or is it going to be Khabib? I'm gonna tell you what. Whoa, the parents, you ain't tell the new guy the rules. Well, what, what's the rules, babe? Do we watch? Do we it's watch MMA? The I, I watch MMA. I like MMA. Oh, okay. Okay, I, go. I, ahead. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Khabib, bro. I, I mean, kinda. I don't know, man. Kinda, kinda got that bread. They, they show, they show. It was TMZ was up there. Kinda was. I don't know. He ain't this. I don't know if he the same guy. I don't know if he still got that same edge at the fighting Floyd and still had that same drive. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Khabib. I'm gonna go with that guy. Nah. Right. 
Um, uh-huh. I'm going to keep it a stack. I don't know a damn thing about the guy McGregor is fighting, so I don't feel like I have enough information to give an opinion. I will, however, say that Drake is part of Tom. Team mm-hmm. McGregor. And, and wherever Bro. wherever Drake oh, go, I'm rolling with Drake. Wow, Drake on man. fire right now, man. Drake ain't took an L in years. If Drake <laughs> say he with Connor, I'm with Connor. If the six guy with Connor, I'm with Connor. If OVO with Connor, I'm with Connor. Drake, don't you leave me down there. Don't you set me up, Drake. You ain't learned from we Drake being in the Kentucky locker room. Then he was in the Butler locker room. Then he, you ain't learned? Yeah, that's back when he was taking L's, bro. He ain't taking it. When the last Drake L, bro? I um, like, when he told Rihanna, I love you, and Rihanna to look like, up the last Drake, Drake L. L. <laughs> <laughs> remember that? Now I remember Remember that? that? He was like, Rihanna, that. I love you, and now Rihanna, was, she hit him with the casita, Jeff. <laughs> she hit him with the casita. Nah, I don't, and Rihanna I don't was like, "Yeah, we ain't even friends no more." That dude weird. That's what she. That's what Rihanna. Bro, that was a hypothetical question, man. Ain't nobody asking. Rihanna, you, Rihanna, <laughs> fine ass <laughs> said Drake weird. That's what she said. But anyway, <laughs> D, this your time to plug yourself if you want to. Maybe you don't want to. Give them all your social yeah. medias, bro. <laughs> nah, still fresh on that lifestyle right there. Wow. So you just catch me on here now. Wow. Okay, Spade. So, before I close the show, you got anything else to say? Fresh is my turn. Yeah, don't, man, don't say nothing man. about them canes, canes up, bro. Nose down. Bro, let me talk my bro, shit. Don't, bro, don't, don't say nothing about, about them canes. Canes up, nose down. Listen, y'all, we had a little bit of extra money in the budget, man. We was able to get us a stat, man. We really need this guy because Le- let me tell you something oh, about LaParis. He can look you square yeah. in the face and be making a stat up, but his face would be like you'll be believing that shit. Like he had told me, he was like the nose that won like 300 years in a row. Bro, I ain't never say no 300 years in a that row. Shit. I remember, bro. Oh, you said like two I remember eight, them, I remember them Big like. East years. I remember them Big East years when oh, Miami was in the Big East. Oh, they used to God. stop Rutgers like 78 to nothing. I been, look. Everybody stop Rutgers. Whoa, like whoa. That, first that of shit, all, that don't even make bro, news. Ain't no, that's, ain't just a, no, that's just another weekend ain't gonna college football. Ain't going to be no Rutgers slander, bro. <laughs> another weekend college bro, football. Ain't no, going to be no Rutgers slander, bro. In case bro. y'all don't know. The parents, hold on. Let me finish plugging myself, bro. Relax. Listen, man, in case y'all don't know, man, my move is almost final. I'm almost, like, actually down here now and then. I can get I can get back on it. We want to get these podcasts up before the Sunday games. And you got the green light to tweet me. If this shit ain't live before the Sunday games, hit me up and be like, Spade, what's up with my show? Because when y'all do that, y'all let me know that y'all really enjoy this show and y'all appreciate it. So when I'm slipping, you got the green light to get on my ass. I mean, you know, don't, don't get too crazy because, you know, I'm nice with these hands. I'm not one of y'all smooth out. Smooth out. But y'all definitely got the green light to hit me up. Go ahead, LaPaz. Listen, man. Go nose. Let's get this dub. Hey, you know, a spade been on my case all week. All I've been tweeting was Kane, Canes versus Nose. Nose versus Bro, Canes. I ain't been That's you, all I've been tweeting. And Spade <laughs> been in my mentions all week. That's you wanna know true. what else, babe? That's not true. Yo, 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 followers. It all, all what you got? Fifty thousand? All fifty thousand of them been in my mentions all week. Let's go make a statement today, like, nose. See, this is why we need a statement. Let's man. make I feel a like statement to, this up again. Let's make a statement today, nose. <laughs> babe. As you, listen, man. We want to thank you guys. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Strong Home Sports. We cannot thank you guys enough for your continued support. Y'all already know you new here. Bang the subscribe button and take two seconds if you are regular hit the like button. It's also a little bell up there. You can click that bell. It sends a notification to your mobile device to let you know that a new episode has been uploaded to YouTube. If you don't want to see two dudes, now three dudes, arguing in a box, it's okay. We got audio podcasts everywhere. SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, Spotify. We everywhere. Can I thank you guys enough for your continued support? We'll see you guys next episode. Yeah. Peace.